sit back and enjoy. For those that don't understand the technology or want to learn a little bit more about it, you got to think of it this way. If you're looking at me right now and you're looking at the picture, you're looking at everything that's in my background, um, a traditional AI processor or AI engine, in order to get to its end result, has to actually analyze and process everything that exists in this image. Same as for a sound, same as for a smell, a vibration, a touch, whatever it is. It has to go through all these different cycles before it gets to the end result. The great thing about Akita and our architecture being neuromorphic is that you kind of break through all the clutter, okay? And you focus specifically on something that's different, something that um, you're, you're targeting. And that's programmed ahead of time uh, through the neural network that you're working with. And uh, that allows Akita to, to use very little power, very little energy to get to the end goal. And then the other thing it allows you to do is achieve maximum performance without using a lot of power. So when we apply that in our real world environment, we're talking about these devices that are battery driven. And what used to be for, for a layman's term, a phone or a watch, you know, now we're talking cars and potentially we're talking flying vehicles with no drivers that are unmanned or, you know, and whatever. Um, these are all becoming battery driven applications. The first thing that an architect has to do when they think of battery driven applications is how do I save power? How do I manage power? How do I consume power? What do I need to do? So, and, but at the same time, I have to have all these compute functionalities in order to do that. So here we, here we are, we are trying to cross this bridge, become mainstay in, a, in an environment that is demanding more compute, don't use a lot of power, don't burn my battery up. And that's what makes Akita very unique. I think it's, the, what makes it so important and what makes it so exciting is the fact that, uh, it, you know, we're on the forefront with AI. There's a long tail here in regards to the introduction of technology or AI based technology. Um, into devices, both at the data center level and also at the edge level. And for BrainShip, we focus on the edge. And for those that aren't familiar with what the edge means, we're talking about devices that we as consumers use on a daily basis, uh, anywhere from tablets and, and wearables to um, electric vehicles and everything in between where you're gonna be capturing information and you wanna process that and have a little bit of intelligence um, on that device. And we're incorporating more intelligence into our, our, our daily routines. Um, and so we, we focus on four key areas for what we call edge-based AI applications. And that's the smart home. Uh, you think of uh, new refrigerators and technology within the house, uh, smart city, think of facial identification and all these different ways that we can apply um, intelligence uh, in our work world. Um, and then there's um, smart transportation, uh, as we talked about before with vehicles and all the, the evolution of vehicles and, and transportation. And then finally, um, smart health and looking at the evolution of being able to apply intelligence into our daily lives for, for uh, medical applications and everything around that. And so BrainChip has developed the world's first neuromorphic processor. And what that means is uh, traditional artificial intelligence processors um, are, are used to processing all of the information that's given to them. And that consumes a lot of energy or power and also a lot of time. And, it, and, and by doing that, it's not efficient. And with a neuromorphic based architecture, we're functioning uh, very similar to the human brain, which means we're really focusing on um, specific functions at a time, but it can handle a lot in the background, uh, very similar to our human brain. And so that makes us extremely unique. What, what that means though, when it comes to the introduction of artificial intelligence at the edge is that we're consuming very little power, which allows you to have all these, these flexibilities and this compute 
activity on the, these edge devices. And not only that, um, we provide something that no one else does, which is on-chip learning. And so now you're learning on the edge and you're enabling your devices to have a little bit of device personalization and flexibility. Um, there's a variety of other benefits that we're offering with our technology that people are taking advantage of. But those are the two really that I like to talk about power consumption and then also the, the device flexibility.